Okay, thank you. We do have quorum. Well, we needed you for quorum. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and thank you uh, to the members of the public. We're here this evening to discuss one item, EY 32.14, request for direction report for 3005 Brewer Street West and 14 Humbervale Boulevard, official plan and zoning bylaw amendment. Now we have two, uh, we do have two deputants that are on the list to speak. If there's anybody else that's not on the list and they would like to speak, if you can just please give your name to the, um, uh, to, to yeah, uh, there is somebody back there um, that just hand your name in to, the, uh, to our staff there at the back and she'll uh, give me the name, okay? Okay, so thank you. And our first deputant is Don Sexton. Okay, Don, you have five minutes. Hey, thank you. Okay. And I wish to thank the councillors and the staff for making uh, their time available to consider this important matter. The current applicant application is a blatant and outrageous violation of the in-place zoning bylaw 941-2003. This bylaw is established in the City of Toronto's official plan. However, the proposed building as designed will be massively overbuilt at 150% compared to what is allowed. The applicant is claiming the mid-rise guidelines should represent the, ap the applicable legal guidance. However, it is well recognized the mid-rise guidelines specifically exclude this area of Bloor Street. The mid-rise guidelines in its formation did not include any area resident input during the process of examination study. Its very wording outlaws its applicability to the site. To quote the mid-rise guideline document, Avenues that have had a, an avenue study and are subject to a city bylaw are excluded from the mid-rise guidelines. This condition applies to Bloor Street, Prince Edward to Mimico Creek. Approval of this subject applicant's plans would be, would be assessed as a violation and a nullification of the in-place bylaw. If approved, the building will establish a precedent that will be quickly capitalized upon by many developers that are holding properties on Bloor in the Kingsway. I have described the bylaw legalities and should be a real nuisance to developers in their striving of, uh, to generate excessive and unfair profits. But why are residents really opposed to this development? Bloor Kingsway is a neighborhood of thousands walking daily to shop from as far as away as three or four kilometers. Many more driving to access the many services provided. This is the nature of a mixed use avenue that planning documents strive for. I quote from the provincial policy statement which includes policies on key issues that affect communities intensification. <coughs> Development should build strong, sustainable and resilient communities that enhance health and social well-being and encourage a sense of place in communities by promoting well-designed built form by, by conserving features that define local character Given this guidance from the province, how is this proposed building offside? It's too big, it's too tall by at least 50% to fit into the streetscape. It would appear awkward and out of place next to the six story building directly adjacent to the west. This building with its 50% greater FSI density and 40% higher, higher height will dwarf its next door neighbor and frankly make both look out of place on Bloor Street. Also, it is on the corner of a residential street, but its final built design violates the angular setbacks that are both, that are required in both bylaw 941 and, the required, and, and required in mid-rise guidelines. These setbacks are enforced to help the building to fit harmoniously into the community. In addition, the building as designed does not provide any green space for current residents to look upon and building residents to care for the pet needs. Pets. Um. Finally, the distributed plans are silent on sidewalk widths provided. Uh, this is critical, especially due to the error at 3009 Bloor Street built before the Bloor Kingsway bylaw. The Bloor Street sidewalk, Bloor Street sidewalks range from seven meters at Grenview, three blocks east to 2.15 meters at 3009 Bloor, Bloor Street next door. 
Naturally, the community requires that positive pass designs, the seven meters, be carried forward and errors of the pass, the 2.15, be ignored. The proposed building overhangs the sidewalk by what appears to be two meters. The building goes straight up from there. This amplifies the perception of height to all who pass by. The sidewalk users will be enclosed by the overhang. And this overhang violates even the mid-rise guidelines in the develop that the developer wants to use. On the residential Humbervale side, the building mass is a scant 0.14 meters from the property line. Homeowners cannot do anything like this on their, on their property. And on top of that, the building design has a second story balcony extending well past the property line. The building is massive. Its design amplifies its bulk. For over eight decades, every multi-story residential building built on Blur Street from Humber to the Mimico Creek have all, except for one, been well set back from the sidewalk with, amp with uh, ample can landscape. Can you please wrap it up? You're over five minutes. Okay, this includes the newest building, the newest buildings on Blur Street. Okay, the okay. building is not designed and will, um, and made to, if this building is not redesigned and made to fit the enforced bylaws, it will cause a significant break with the characteristics and personality Th thank of you. Blur Kingsway area. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, do we have a, a, a do we have any questions? No? Any questions to the deputy? Yes, Councillor uh, DiGiorgio has a question. Very quick question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you made reference to the um, Obico zoning bylaw that was passed in 2003. That's correct. Was that a bylaw that was initiated by the city of Etobicoke back then, or was it just somebody that made an application? Um, my understanding is it was initially initiated by the, um, by the city of Etobicoke and adopted by the city of Toronto into its official plan. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Our next deputant is Stephen Kish. Okay, you have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I'll be very brief. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Stephen Kish. I reside at 41 Winston Grove. I'm a member of the community. I just want to make two quick points, uh, but first I uh, support the comments made by the previous speaker. So my first point recommendation, I support the detailed community planning recommendations, which concludes in part and so simply, and this is a quote, the proposal is inappropriate with regards to the proposed height, massing and density and would negatively impact the vitality of this main street. Uh, and that's one of the key conclu conclusions by uh, community planning. Um, second, I'm going to make a pitch for trees. Um, I ask council to consider that planting trees that will be uh, trees that will become substantial in maturity along the entirety of the Bloor Street and Humberville sidewalk impacted by the development will help in reducing the negative impact of the development. And I'm assuming if there is a development, it'll be a scaled down development. Uh, we know that trees are important. We all know this for a variety of reasons. They moderate, moderate air temperature and reduce uh, pollution. But there is now research data suggesting that trees, in particular the extent of tree cover, may actually improve one's health and actually reduce mortality. Um, trees also, in my opinion, will help provide a sense of space, uh, sorry, a sense of place, uh, which is the specific aim of, uh, one of the specific aims of the Planning Act. Uh, the developer, in fact, in uh, their uh, November 9, uh, 2017 submission, in fact, supports a best practice performance standard that includes trees, and I quote, sidewalks are wide enough to include and support trees, and I wonder if that's a true statement along the Bloor Street and Humberville sidewalk. Uh, I hope that is a true statement. So I simply ask that the developer deliver on that statement. Thank you. Th thank you. Do we have any questions? Uh, Councillor Desset. Thank you very much, and I love your comments about trees. Have you I asked... I love trees. Sorry. Have you <laughs> asked... And uh, not just are we healthier, we're happier people when we live around trees. Yes. You know, um, I, um, to be fair, I'm a researcher, so okay. I'm careful about what I say. Uh, the data suggests that, but they don't prove that. Oh, uh, I, so I disagree with that. Uh, I can prove it. I feel happier. Would you rather, 
uh, would you rather look at, uh, would you rather be associated with or look at a tree, a magnificent mature tree, uh, or a concrete block uh, of a high You got me on that one. So my question is you know, this. That's, that's a bit my unfair, but. My question is this. Yeah. Have you spoken with your local councillor and the proponent, therefore, to put silver cells oh. under the sidewalk, which actually allows the trees to mature better than just if you stick them in what we call a, a tree coffin? My additional recommendation, and I don't know how, how the city handles this, is that the owner of the property right. should be responsible for maintaining the trees. I, I don't know if that's the fact. But they should also, if, if you're going to want the trees to live and survive and flourish and be bigger, you need to, you can't just put them in a piece of soil. You've got to actually do these silver cells underground, which allows them much more uh, room to grow, room to keep the soil. So if you haven't spoken to the owner and you haven't spoken to your, your local councillor, I recommend you do and ask for that. Whatever gets built, you want trees. My point is, uh, I'm asking for trees along the Bloor Street yep. and Humberville mm -hmm. side. Uh, there are trees in the middle of Bloor Street. I'm, I know Bloor they Street. They don't well. count, yeah. you know. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, count, uh, Councillor uh, Diciano? Uh, okay, I thought you did. No. Oh, Councillor Campbell? I had a question for you, sorry. Uh, so eight stories is proposed. What, what do you feel is, would be acceptable? Uh, I'm not going to answer that question. Uh, uh, sometimes well, I've involved as an expert witness in because I lack the expertise. I honestly don't know. Let me I, I prefer two or three stories myself. So, so the, um, uh, do you find favor with the condominium building that's at the corner of Montgomery and Bloor on the southwest corner? I'm not sure I'm familiar That's right with across it. from the Starbucks. Montgomery and Bloor, I've, southwest um, corner. I, I, I'm not familiar with that. Oh, okay. Well, you got to go for a walk and go to Starbucks. Uh, no, I don't go past my community. <laughs> Clearly, but I'm not. I, I'm not. If that is, you, you know, I'm not I'm in favor of the condominium uh, that's on the corner of Bloor and Royal York, which uh, the setback oh, okay. is practically okay. zero. What about what about the height there? Um, the height in the absence of mature trees right. uh, in mature trees uh, that uh, one finds in other parts of Etobicoke uh, bothers me. Okay. You know, but, but again, uh, uh, just to be clear, I'm not an expert. Yeah, you know, no. I, well, none of us you know, are experts, right? You know, I, you know, I, 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 I believe I have some proficiency in trees, okay. but, uh, okay, but whether it should be six, uh, six stories, uh, I would actually go to two or three stories. Okay, but eight, eight stories would be too, too much. I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? No. Okay, our next, yes, I know. Uh, our next speaker is Kate Cooper. Good evening, Madam mm. Chair, members of Council. How are you this afternoon? Okay. Uh, my name is Kate Cooper. I am a planner with Bouse Fields Incorporated. I'm the planning consultant that represents the landowner on these two sites. Um, first of all, I would like to thank everybody for coming out today. It's a beautiful July evening for taking the time to come out and to um, voice your concerns because we are always very interested in hearing what the public has to say. Um, and secondly, as everybody is aware, we have appealed the zoning bylaw amendment to the local planning appeal tribunal. And so inevitably the decision will go down that road and be ultimately decided through that process. However, um, the landowners and our consulting team are absolutely open to continuing discussions with Councillor DiCiano, the rest of Community Council, the City of Toronto staff, and the community throughout this process because we're very interested to see what the community has to say. Um, we do have some members of our consulting team here tonight um, if, if we welcome any questions that you may have. Okay, Th thank you. Councillor DiGiorgio, you have a question? Yeah, and I, I should know the answer to this, but uh, did your client also uh, appeal the site plan or did he not submit a site plan? We haven't plan? submitted a site plan as of yet. We've only appealed the zoning bylaw amendment. We have not appealed the official plan amendment. All right, thank you. Councillor Doucette, question? Thank you. What's the width of Bloor Street here? The width of Bloor right Street, the right-of-way right width is, I believe it's 27 meters. 20 or 27? 27. 27. Yeah. And what is the height of your proposed building? The proposed building. Bear with me for one second. 
it's one hundred and forty five point six meters to the top of roof and then there's a mechanical penthouse which is so i missed your one hundred and forty seven one hundred and forty five point six meters sorry one hundred and forty five point six feet yes i don't have that can you can you transfer it Hang into on. the same 27 meters? Yes, it's 27.5. My brain won't work on both of them. My um, The resolution <laughs> on my plan is very... 27.5 meters to the top of the eighth floor. 27.5. 27.5, is that including mechanical? That's not including mechanical. And then you've got, what, a 5 meter, 5.5 meter mechanical? Yes, that's right. So technically, your 0.5 meters, half a meter over in your right of way height and then you got your mechanical that is on correct, top of yes. that. Okay. And how are your angular planes because you are looking at a residential neighborhood beside and behind? We have, um, the, the landowner also owns 14 Humbervale as you know. It's being included as part of this development and we've measured an angular plane from the south side of the 14 Humbervale property line. So okay. if you're viewing that in terms of the avenues and mid-rise guidelines, it's a, it's we're a bungalow, generally... It's a bungalow to the south. To the south, yes. Okay. It's being proposed as a single detached, two-story single detached residential dwelling okay. with three bedrooms, but it's part of the development. It will have underground parking. Currently, as proposed, there's underground parking. Okay, underneath. so I've just gone through this. Are you going to be demolishing the house, putting your underground parking in, and then putting a That's house correct. back? That's correct, yes. Ah, yes. We, we looked at something like that at further along Bloor Street. Um, okay, so your angular planes and um, what um, amenity space? Are you having amenity space on the rooftop? There's an amenity terrace on the second floor of the building. Facing? Facing south. Facing um, south. Yes. Outdoor amenity space facing south, that's correct. I, do you have any privacy screening there for the uh, residents to the south of it? There will be privacy screening for the residents to the south, yes. Okay. And anything on your rooftop area? Um, yes, we have amenity space on the rooftop as well. Again, on the south side? It is on the east side of the building. East side, so that's on the... On, the, on Humbervale. Humbervale side. That's right. Okay. So the residents to the south won't be impacted so much Not by, by the that. roof, no. And it's set back quite a distance from the um, neighborhood's designation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is there any further questions? Um, actually, I, I have a question. Um, so in your deputation, you mentioned that you would like to continue to work with the, the city, local council, and the residents to address their concerns. So it seems like their, their, their big concern um, is the uh, the height That's so correct. W would you be willing to reduce the height well I can't say for sure whether we'd be willing to reduce the height but we would like to sit down work through the process because this application was appealed we didn't have a chance to have a community informa a formal community information meeting we would like to continue discussions and and are very interested in hearing what the community has to say yeah well it's clear that they're they feel eight stories is too high. So I think we could, we absolutely could look at that through the process. Okay, thank you. The questions? No? Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that's not on the list to speak that would like to speak? If you can please state your name, please. <coughs> Uh, Madam Chair, members of Council, my name is Michael Green, G-R-E-E-N, okay. 26 Brentwood Road South. That's half a block south of Bloor Street. Okay. And it's about 100 meters, 150 meters from the proposed development. Okay. So you have five minutes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I did actually write to you, um, and you, I think you have my uh, email. Uh, I'm the chair of the Thompson Orchard Community Association. That's one of the small community associations in this area um, that runs parallel along Bloor Street. Um, the reason that we wrote um, was that uh, we feel that this area um, is very well served by something that you've heard uh, referred to as the Bloor Kingsway Urban Design Guidelines, and not just guidelines, but also the accompanying bylaw uh, that governs this area, as opposed to what was uh, implied a few minutes ago, um, the mid-range guidelines. 
this area was um, deliberately, um, I'll, I'll say, uh, not ignored, and I'm probably not using the right words, but it was, it was um, when the mid-range guidelines came in, it was identified as one of those areas that already had a pre-existing detailed study where there'd been a lot of um, information shared between council, um, planners, uh, consultants, <coughs> and residents. And as a result of that, the, the pre-existing bylaw was, was in place. When the, when the mid-range guidelines came in, uh, as a result, this area was exempted from the mid-range guidelines. Um, and, and so why do we care? Um, I, I think the question was, was asked earlier, you know, what do, we, wh what do you think about um, maybe a six-story building or something that's less than eight? And, and that really gets to, to the nub of the whole thing because the, the existing bylaw um, outside of the, the mid-range guidelines provides for six-story buildings up to 18 meters. Um, that type of development harmonizes and, and meets the, the um, residential area with a lot less impact, uh, frankly, and violence than uh, an eight or a nine story building um, that goes up 27 meters plus mechanical. Um, and, and I hope that maybe answers a question that, uh, that, that popped up earlier. But it is that type of, um, I, I don't think it's a subtle difference, I think it's a massive difference to be quite honest. Um, and, and that was why my association uh, asked me to write uh, and then come along and, uh, and speak to you this evening. I don't want to read what I wrote because you've already seen it. Um, as much as anything coming tonight is your opportunity to say, wh what do you mean when you said that? Um, so it's almost like your opportunity to, to ask me things that I didn't put in the, in the last because I don't want to be repetitive, um, either for your sake or everybody that's come along this evening uh, to, to talk to you. So Thank you. We do have a question for you. Deputy Mayor Holliday. Thank you for speaking to us. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you didn't bring it up with parking. So one of the earlier speakers talked about, you know, the importance of parking areas so people can come and visit and, and use the different or visit the different shops. And I'm one of them, you know, we go down to eat. Uh, I used to go to church there once in a while. Um, I guess th my, my question is, my concern is, is throughout this process, sometimes there's a temptation to relax on the parking because you're right next to a subway station and that's logical. Um, but perhaps I would put to you, do you have a, a view on this because you want to make sure that you have adequate parking and it seems that everybody's there on a Friday night, including the visitors to the condo. Mm -hmm. um, d does your association have a view on that? Do you want to encourage parking or do you think it's something you can slip on this? Um, well, no, we don't. And, and to be quite honest, I didn't dig into individual elements of, of what disturbs us about the building um, because uh, in, in, in my very brief email, it really was, you know, you're, you're looking at um, uh, adopting uh, a report from staff. Um, and really that was the only sort of thing that I, I wanted to, to, to put before you and that was my, my only sort of ask of you this evening. Um, because then I think that has the potential to open um, a much more realistic dialogue um, because for one thing the developer knows that council is serious um, about taking a position should they just want to go ahead with the building as planned and appeal to the, uh, to, to the LPAT. Um, but to answer the question about parking, parking is an issue in, in our area. Um, uh, on my particular street, um, we, we have parking every evening. It's very, very popular because people go to sure. the bars and to the restaurants on Bluff Street. It's great. I mean, it doesn't, it d doesn't bother me at all. People don't, you know, block the sidewalk. Uh, sorry, we don't have sidewalks. They don't block the driveways. So it sort of works okay. Um, I am concerned when condominiums, though, use the, 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 the argument that just because we're by the subway, people don't um, come on and buy in our apartments and uh, have cars. Uh, I don't think that, in, in reality, is, is proving to, to work out. And therefore, where the city does have requirements for parking, I think those requirements are, in fact, met. Uh, and, and do need to be met by developers, if, if that answers your question. Yeah, I, well, I, to be frank, I'm just trying to get you thinking about the next steps because mm -hmm. this is the easy part. The hard part is coming up, right? And trying to deal with this at the, at the LPAT. But um, I guess my other question might be is, you know, has your association formed a view whether or not they support the idea of the city being the ones to supplement parking needs in public space? And uh, you weren't here for the benefit of the council meeting earlier today, but 
some members of council moved motions w in association with element uh, with with different uh, applications that would prohibit the new residents from seeking on street parking because we were worried that you know we were a little thin on the parking spaces and that there was this expectation that you'd dump the cars on the street and I just wondered if the association had a view for that and if not uh, maybe it's something you would think about over time yeah I, I mean the, the we have tried to, um, for example, the, the, the Catholic Church at the top of our street um, at one point seemed to just have parishioners coming willy-nilly and, and sort of parking on both sides of the street. Yep. Um, the, the association did take a position on that, but the position was, let's go and have a conversation with the Monsignor, uh, and, and we did, and, uh, and, and quite frankly, it was just a question of saying, uh, hey, everybody, you know, it's, it's a pretty narrow street. Let's park on the one side that is permitted and not park on the other. And, and it, frankly, it worked out quite well. Right. And, and that was many, many years ago, and we, we've never had to revisit it. Um, the, the community was concerned a number of years ago when a developer bought a bungalow that was the first bungalow south of the laneway um, and then uh, went, to the, um, went to the OMB, wanted to actually demolish the bungalow and put in uh, five or six angle, angle parking. Um, that actually did go to the OMB, and the OMB ruled in, in I'll say, in favor. Uh, the city opposed it at that time, um, and also in favor of the position that the residents had taken, which is it's not a great idea to be knocking down bungalows to put in half a dozen um, parking spaces, because another half a dozen parking spaces out of the, you know, the 100, 150, 200 that's in that stretch, it's not, it's not going to make it um, wonderful. Uh, and it's not really going to solve the problem because half a dozen either way isn't, isn't going to be a big thing. Um, strangely enough, the Toronto Parking Authority has since bought that property uh, for over a million dollars and despite the shortage of housing in Toronto, does plan to go ahead and demolish that, uh, that bungalow. Um, so does that bother people? Absolutely. Um, but I think that's, well, we actually thought we'd won that battle, um, but it looks like it's one that we won and then we lost again. So thank you. Never say never. Thank There's you. There's always penalties, <laughs> right? Do we have any, Councillor Campbell? So are, are members of your association uh, generally aware of the development that's happening and what they, what, what's going to be? Well, what's th what's I would say they're not really generally aware. Um, uh, the people that have uh, signed up and have the benefit of getting the newsletters from the from the local councillor, um, you know, do have the the the, the general details of it, um, but the fact that we haven't had the uh, the opportunity public of a public meeting yeah. uh, and yet the developer seems to have jumped ahead to get in the OMB LPAC queue. You sort of feel disenfranchised a little bit by the fact that the, it's gone this far along the process without a public meeting. That's a much uh, polite way uh, than, than I <laughs> might have uh, phrased it but but I'll <laughs> say yes to that one because it was the territory right? No it, it, it was so good uh, yeah. so yes uh, yeah. We, yeah. We, we do and, and I think it's you know to be honest it's disappointing that these things happen yeah um, it, it really is but but it happens and I can't control it and you can't control it. Have, have you uh, have you or any of the other local organizations reached out to the developer to try to you know start up talks? We, we I, I mean we haven't because we we did think um, that even though they have taken the step that they have taken that there may be an opportunity still to right. have this public meeting. Well, that was said too earlier. Th Hopefully that'll happen. Right? Th yeah, and, uh, you know, now because it's a, uh, an election year, um, it, it seems to be a little fuzzy whether right. it, it can happen or if it's appropriate for it to happen. And you'd know the answer to that one better than me. I noticed in the, in the proposal it says there's only something like 500 square feet of retail. Does that does that concern you that this this, this uh, site is going to contain hardly any retail on the ground floor? It, it I mean it does because retail on on the ground floor and, I, and again uh, let me be honest I haven't looked at the plans because yeah. I haven't gone into that detail. But it does seem like it, square feet. It, it, yeah, yeah, I mean it, it looks like an awfully small amount of, of space. Yeah. Um, and, and that notion of having retail on the ground floor on our avenues, m to me, makes a lot of, sp uh, makes a lot of sense. Sure. I mean, there have been exceptions to that. Uh, you mentioned the Montgomery building yep. um, when you were talking about the height. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was an example where, in, in fact, the building um, has uh, no retail and right. is residential. 
Um, but you know, the community s looked at that one individually as opposed mm -hmm. to just doing this sort of one size fits all conversation and just says, you know, it, it retail there has never worked. It didn't no. work with the previous owners. Bef but I mean, uh, when you go, when you go east of Montgomery, it's, it's, there's retail, there's, there's, it, bus there's business or be east of Royal York. There's, there's businesses operating. It, it right. is. And, and, and that should be encouraged and there should be sufficient space on the ground floor to, uh, to accommodate that. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, just I just have a, a question. Um, so, being that the applicant has appealed, and so the community has not had an opportunity to comment on the application. There's been no community meetings. So, if there was, there would be an opportunity for the community to address all these specific issues. And correct. I, I think the, 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 the biggest challenge that the community is, is going to have is that the, the applicant seems um, totally tied to these mid-range guidelines, which, as we know, are significantly more permissive um, than, than the, the guidelines and the bylaw that is in place for that particular area. Mm. Um, so, I mean, it, it, would we be um, prepared to go along and have a, a, a conversation? Absolutely. Um, but the developer, I think, has somewhat tipped their hand by going to the um, going to the OMB LPAT, and and clearly, uh, by everything that was even said tonight, is putting all their eggs in the mid-range guideline basket. It, in my view. Thank you. Um, oh, didn't I thought you did? Yeah, you. I think you. Yeah, and I think you have too, Councillor Bush. You didn't ask a question. It seems like you did. Okay, Councillor DiGiorgio. <laughs> uh, two things. First of all, typically this particular meeting is the opportunity for the community to have input into whatever is being proposed. But I noticed that the report, the directions report, doesn't really have a draft zoning bylaw attached to it. That is to say, it doesn't really tell us what it is that the applicant is actually seeking. I do note also so this is my question. You're aware that the, notwithstanding that the applicant has appealed to the OMB, there is a pre-hearing set for September. A pre-hearing is not really a full-blown hearing. It's an opportunity for people to sort of establish some of the concerns, the community to establish the concerns that they have with the application and whatnot mm -hmm. before an actual hearing is scheduled. So there is some opportunity for dialogue at the OMB. It would be useful if you, through the local council, initiated the opportunity for dialogue between now and September. Mm -hmm. and, and that's certainly something that, uh, and thank you for making us aware of that. I personally wasn't aware of that. Um, I, I have been to an OMB pre-hearing. Uh, our association actually was one of the, the, the groups, although we weren't named as a party. Right. Uh, we did go along and speak at the development uh, at uh, 2915 uh, Bloor Street, uh, which um, benefited, if you like, from the same type of support, both from council uh, and also from from legal and planning staff. Uh, in in that that application was in fact uh, appealed. Uh, sorry, not not appealed, but but opposed at the at the OMB. Um, so yes, I mean individually, I think we really focused on the fact that staff had made a similar um, uh, request for direction uh, at this meeting, uh, and that's why when I wrote that, uh, that we hoped that you would in fact agree with that um, because I think that's a, an extremely important step um, so that associations are in fact supported by um, the council and, and vice versa. I mean, it's a two-way street, right? Uh, no pun intended. Okay, th so. thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now, um, thank you. Oh, yeah. Do we have anyone else that would like to speak? If you can come forward, please indicate your name and address. This is spontaneous. I wasn't planning on speaking today. Uh, my name is Phyllis Stern. I live at 34 Bermuda Avenue. You mentioned about parking, and I, that's what compelled me to speak. We have a very serious issue in the Kingsway about parking. My husband has a business in the Kingsway, and he has told me several times, patients have called at the last minute and said, I've been driving around the block, I can't find a place to park, and they've canceled at the last moment. I went to the various area businesses. I went to 10 businesses, and I interviewed people, and I asked, are you having a problem with parking? And every single business I spoke to said yes. They said, business is down this year 15 to 20%. 
and it's because of just during the week what has happened is they closed some kind of parking at islington subway to build a high rise i understand is that true and anyways they say what has happened is that people drive from mississauga now to royal york they you they they take the subway downtown they use their apps during the day and there's no parking for the merchants on in the kingsway so when you speak about parking i mean it is a serious problem in our area um Another problem is that, you know, in that stretch 2915 Bloor, they're going to be building, there's a proposed condominium that's before the OMB right now. Well, behind some of those buildings, there is parking. My husband, in the building that my husband is in, there is parking, but they're going to eliminate that parking because I'm sure they'll eliminate it because um, the, the city just won't let them park there. And so the merchants who use that parking say, where will we park? There's no place. So it is a serious problem, and, I, and that's all I want to talk about right at this moment. I am disappointed that we didn't have a community meeting, because we certainly would have gotten people out, and people would have come to the meeting to discuss all their concerns. We have a lot of concerns. One of them is transportation, traffic in our area. Actually, for 2915 Bloor, traffic has not come forward and told us how they're going to handle the traffic for our area. And we have many serious problems and concerns. So we would like to hear more. We would like to have a public meeting so that people can come out and give their concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have questions? Okay, thank you very much. If you if you'd like to come forward to speak. My name is Joe or Josephine Diders, and I actually don't live right in the area. I live on Old Mill Terrace near the Old Mill. Um, one thing I find about this whole application right now is the arrogance. I'm sorry for saying so of the applicant. Over a year ago, before there was even a sign about the proposed development, I was told by someone on site, I don't know if it's the owner or manager, we won't be doing anything, we're going straight to the OMB. So to me, that already says something about the applicant. They're not really interested in working with the community if they've excluded us from any, any meetings with them. So I'm not holding a lot of water on the fact that would they be willing to talk to us. I agree with this woman about the parking. Um, I, I drive up into the area, I walk and I drive. Um, the parking in behind the retail stores is usually full by 9 o'clock, 9.30. It's difficult at certain times of the day to get parking. Um, I live on Old Mill Terrace. It's a crescent-shaped street in and out of Bloor Street. And often when I'm trying to get out of my street, I have to wait for the light to change at Old Mill, which is now called Old Mill Trail. It used to be Humber, in order for the traffic to stop that I can pull for because they now have a sign at each end of the street, don't block intersection or whatever, don't block the entrance. I pull forward, cars are stopping, but what's happening is there is a yellow line with stripes that people are not supposed to use as a laneway to get into the turning lane to go in front of Owell Subway. And more times than not, I pull out, the cars are stopped, and I pull out and there's someone coming right down the yellow lines. I've almost been broadside a few times, it's scary. I actually talked to someone from city traffic and be very nice to return my call right away and essentially said, because I thought, well, maybe they can put postal on there to stop them from driving there, but they can't because there's driveways in front of there, so they couldn't get in and out. So and he essentially told me, if the car stopped for me and I pull out to get onto the street and someone runs into me, it's my fault. So it doesn't give me a good feeling. The traffic in the area, that I never know was a big difference in 40 years ago, it, it's progress, whatever, is incredible. Uh, they speed down, th they come down the hill by the subway, they race to go through the lights at the old mill, and they carry on. Often it's non-stop traffic. So my concern is traffic. My concern is the fact I don't really believe that the applicant really wants to work with the community, or they would have done a meeting to start with. That would be the right way to do it. Um, I'm concerned about the infrastructure in general, because there are numerous, as you know, proposed projects coming up. I worry about the schools, I worry about the ambulances, I worry about the fire, I worry about water and sewage. It's, to me, 
to go above what you're technically allowed is pure greed on the developer's site. He can sell a building and do well at six floors, but it's all about money. And I think at some point in time, we have to look at the people who live in the community and not what the developer makes and what they walk away with, but what they leave behind. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, is there anybody else that would like to speak before I close it up? Okay. I think you spoke. No, no, sorry, you can't ask questions. You spoke. Anybody else that'd like to speak before I close it off? No? Okay, thank you. So we'll take it into uh, committee. Councillor DiCianox, uh, questions to staff. Thank you, Chair. And uh, yes, uh, and the question is with respect to obviously the concerns we've heard um, that there is no community meeting. The original report. Um, had language about a meeting and then of course it was appealed. So uh, given the rules with an election season upon us, uh, would planning be able to hold a meeting between now and uh, let's say the end of September uh, where the applicant could hear the concerns of the local community? And of course I <laughs> could attend, not in an official capacity as a counselor, but certainly as a resident. I'm actually not 100% sure on the answer of this. I believe that we are able to hold community meetings between the, during the election break. Um, I think there is also a stipulation that anybody who is a candidate must also be invited, but I would have to check into that. Okay, so if I put a motion forward to uh, request staff to hold a community meeting uh, sometime uh, in the fall or certainly before a pre-hearing, uh, you'd be able to facilitate that? I believe so. I would need to check on the pre-hearing date. It, the pre-hearing date is September 18th. Uh, so it would be possible to schedule something before that. Great. That's all my questions. Okay. So, questions, uh, Councillor DiGiorgio and then Councillor Gisset. Yeah, I, I just asked this question out of curiosity of the uh, planner. So why do we not have um, a draft zoning bylaw attached to the report? Is there a reason why it, they just didn't put it in? Or? Through the chair? Uh, typically, when we do, uh, can can you can you speak sure. to us, not to Councillor De Giorgio? Sure. Typically, <laughs> is the microphone on? Yes. yes, it's on. Thank you. My first day in the hot seat. <laughs> um, typically, when we write a request for a directions report in response to an appeal, the report actually does not include a draft zoning bylaw because we don't write the zoning bylaws and put something forward if it isn't something that we are recommending approval for. Um, what we do is we present, uh, we describe the project, we present the elevation drawings and the site plan and the roof plan of the drawing of the project so people have a sense of what is being asked for. And then we ask that when the item does go to the Ontario Municipal Board, that at the time that the bylaw is finalized, given whatever decision is made by the board, that we then, uh, it's at that time that we actually write up the bylaw. Okay. And I reason I right. ask, the reason I ask is because sometimes when people get to the board, the draft zoning bylaws actually that the that the applicant might submit to the board is actually quite different from what is comes forward to here. And that's pu well, not only puzzling, very troubling. It's true. Uh, between the time when the appeal is filed and the time that a decision is made at the board or even the beginning of the hearing happens, the actual hearing, not the pre-hearing, the applicant can change their proposal and write a draft bylaw that reflects the changed proposal. So while today there is an application for an eight-story building um, that has been appealed, by the time we get to a hearing, it could be different. Could be nine. Could be 27. Could be three. Uh, Councillor Desset. Thank you very much. So the applicant put in an application. It was a complete application at a point in time. They had 120 days and they went to LPAP. Is that correct? How come there wasn't a community meeting before the 120 days? The application came in. The application came in at the end of November. Okay, then we had Christmas. Uh, we had Christmas and due to staffing changes and the lack of staff on our team, we 
wrote the report around April when our new staff arrived. And then that made it to the last community council meeting as a prim report. Yeah. But the day or the week before it came, it was, came, it was supposed to come to have the prim to then schedule the meeting. The appeal was filed. Okay. So we were sent so back. By the time the preliminary the report got to us in this council chamber, it was after 120 days. Yes. Okay. Um, Interesting to hear about the Blur Kingsway Urban Design Guidelines. I think that's fascinating. Um, only in October. No, not only. But anyway, um, I'm good. so it's, that's mentioned here, but the proponent seems to be using the Midrise Guideline, which is why I was asking about Midrise Guidelines, one to one, all that stuff. Has planning had discussions? I know you haven't had a meeting, but has planning had discussions with the proponent so they are aware of the urban design guideline, which is, went, which is meant to guide them versus the mid-rise guideline, which is meant to guide them? So have you met, has planning met with the proponent and explained this to them? Certainly at the pre-application stage, but post-application, I would have to turn to Vanessa Covello, who's our senior planner on the file. Um, and ask if they've had any meetings with the applicant since then. You've had no no meetings with the applicant. Okay, which is unusual as well, I would say. Yeah. Would be in my own view. Um, so this direction report is suggesting sending city league or city planning to LPAT um, at the pre-hearing in September, I hear, September. Okay. Um, I can't ask the councillor, but maybe would you know if there's going to be any other parties at the pre-hearing? Are you aware of any community groups who are going to be parties? Are they going to be participants if they can't be parties? Because that's one way that where the community can get their voice heard at the pre-hearing. I would expect a large number of parties and participants because uh, about two blocks to the east of here, also on the south side, we have recently been through an Ontario Municipal Board hearing yep. at 2915 Bloor, and there were, um, I would say, at least a dozen, possibly more participants, mm -hmm. and uh, several parties who were there during the entire length of the hearing, which has not yet concluded. Okay. So that is another chance for, one, you're going to have a community meeting before the pre-hearing, and two, you will be helping them with the local councillor advising residents how they can get involved at the, the pre-hearing as well. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further questions? Okay, I have a question. Um, so we have, uh, in our agenda, we have a report dated March 10th, and, and it's a preliminary report where the recommendation was to schedule a community consultation meeting. So are you saying that since March until today that you haven't had a community meeting because of lack of staffing? Is, is that the answer? I believe the preliminary report. Uh, it was in March. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and the recommendation was to, to schedule a community consultation meeting. This is in March. So I don't understand from March, community council meeting, Till today, why there hasn't been time to have a community meeting? I'm going to invite Vanessa Cavella to speak to this. Oh, okay. So, so when the preliminary report came to community council, uh, the councillor actually made a motion because uh, it, the application was appealed at that time. So there was a motion put in for a request for direction report. So instead of adopting the recommendations of the preliminary report at that time. Um, the councillor had asked staff to come forward with the request for direction because the appeal was already submitted. I know, but uh, we were just told by staff that the reason as well is that there's been lack of, that there's been lack of staffing. So w what's, what, what's that all about? So, so that's correct. Uh, so between November and the time when the preliminary report was submitted, yeah. uh, there was a lack of staff at that time and that's why the preliminary report was late and also that there was no community meeting at that time. Normally, we would like, if an application came in in November, to have it within two or three cycles to, with the preliminary report to EYCC. So it didn't go in November. It didn't go in January. It didn't go in February. Um, it was written in March and signed off in March. It was supposed to go then. But uh, when it 
because of the deadlines and how long it takes between when you write it and when it gets to EYCC on the agenda, the week before um, it was to be on the, it was on the agenda and it was slated to go, the week before the meeting, they hit their 120 days and they filed the appeal. So we would have held the community meeting after that meeting, but uh, we then had EYCC direction to change well, the nature of the report. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll end up that then. Okay, thank you. Um, any further questions to staff? No? Okay, speakers. Councilor DeCiano. Okay, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, and thank you everyone for being here tonight. Um, I think it, uh, I think uh, uh, given the deputations tonight, everyone's pretty uh, steadfast in the community on what we're looking for. And uh, it's certainly no surprise that we're looking for builders who come into the community to adhere to our uh, Blue Street guidelines, and that's six stories. And I think uh, we're all very well aware of 2915 Bloor. Um, we didn't uh, shy away from a challenge on that. We're at the OMB. Uh, there was no settlement that we um, uh, entertained because we want to see it adhered to. Um, unfortunately, that hearing is going to last until mid-December late December and following that we'll have some kind of a decision on where we stand given that we have a, a mid-rise guideline that uh, may or may not be superseded by a mid-rise guideline. Um, so I'm going to actually, sorry, uh, I'm going to put a motion forward as well. Sorry about that, Rosemary. Um, that the Etobicoke York Community Council request city planning staff to hold a community consultation meeting on this application prior to the pre-hearing meeting scheduled for September 18, 2018. Um, we've heard that the developer is willing to uh, talk and hear the concerns of the community and um, obviously our concerns, we're looking for our concerns to be met 100%, not halfway. Um, so I look forward to a meeting that happens before the 18th so that at the pre-hearing uh, perhaps there's a, a change of heart uh, and if there's not uh, then we'll see everybody at, uh, at the uh, actual hearing. So thank you again for coming out. Um, I'm going to move staff recommendations which is to defend this uh, and our reports and uh, we'll move forward from there and hopefully we'll see everyone at a community meeting uh, coming up in short order. Further speakers? No? Okay, I just want to sp uh, speak briefly. Um, I will be supporting local councillor. And w I did ask the question to the, uh, um, to the agent for the, um, for the applicant, and she did indicate that they would be willing to work with the city and with the community. So hopefully, um, at that consultation meeting, Councillor DiCiano, that they would agree to address the concerns of the community. Uh, so there would be an opportunity. And I'd like to thank everyone for coming out. So on the amendment by Councillor DiCiano, all in favor? Recorded vote. Recorded vote. Councillor DiGiorgio, Councillor Doucette, Councillor Palacio, Councillor Nunziata, Deputy Mayor Stephen Holliday, Councillor DiCiano, Councillor Campbell, and Councillor Ford. Item is amended, all in favor? Carried. Thank you, it's been carried. Um, Councillor Holliday, you have a motion to introduce and enact certain bills. I do. Thank you, Madam Chair, that the Etobicoke York Community Council pass and declare as bylaws Bill 1004 to 1007, prepared for the July 4th, 2018 meeting 32 of the Community Council. Shall these bills be uh, passed and declared as a bylaw? All in favor? Carried. Councillor DiCiano, you have a motion to introduce and enact the confirming bill. I do, Madam Speaker, it's that the Etobicoke York Community Council pass and declare as a bylaw confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceedings of the Etobicoke York Community Council acting under delegated authority at meeting 32 on July the 4th, 2018. Shall this be, uh, bill be passed and declared as a bylaw? All in favor, carried. Motion to adjourn by Councillor Palacio, carried. Thank you everyone for coming out.